This week on Behind the Pulpit, it is Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. And today we have for you a special Christmas edition of Behind the Pulpit. Uh, I brought a little prop of my own with me today to share with you. Little little holiday nog right here. Because uh, Tim told me last week that every single Christmas sermon I've ever preached has referenced <laughs> Today, along with our normal segments, we have a few extra ones for you to throw in a little holiday fun for this special episode. This is not Feliz good. Navidad. I need a swig. This guy oh, likes to do Feliz Navidad. Dun, 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 dun. Is that on your list too? Yeah, Feliz Navidad. No, it Come isn't. On. And as always, wherever you may be watching or listening to this today, we hope you're having a wonderful day and a Merry Christmas. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this special Christmas edition of Behind the Pulpit. out there everybody merry christmas 2023 if you're watching this you are up bright and early uh maybe you've opened your presents maybe you haven't maybe you've had some uh uh some delicious hot cocoa or coffee or whatever it is but we're coming to you for a behind the pulpit christmas edition Uh, i'm joined here by pastor dave over here who just finished preaching a sermon uh on sunday and uh he's out of breath he had to run down here he was just he was bringing it he he had his (laughs) <laughs> wielding the sword. He was wielding his sword up there on the stage. Merry you, Christmas, guys. Did you bring the sword down with you? Ah, I gave the For sword back to our children's ministry oh, department man. already. Boo, boo. But I it was we were... it was a very I should have named titled that sermon The Sword of Christmas, I think. There was a lot of That would have been good, yeah. A lot of sword wielding there. Oh so, my goodness. Do people drink hot cocoa this early on Christmas morning? I don't know, but I'll tell you what. Uh, I brought a little prop of my own with me today to share with you. Um, my wife went and somebody bought this for her yesterday. Whoa. Little little holiday nog right here. Because uh, Tim told me last week that every single Christmas sermon I've ever preached has referenced eggnog. Uh, Does your I wife am, know that you I'm have pretty that? Sure. She did. She did know. Well, we so here's the funny thing about this whole thing is we don't like eggnog. I just refer. I just assume other people do. So my right, I right think here, my man. mother-in-law I'll take that off your hands. Why well, not? My mother. Okay, we'll, but we'll here's do the just thing. Fine with the eggnog. My, my mother-in-law got it. Thank for you, us. Amanda. Appreciate it. It's we'll, made with the Henschel all- household. will enjoy <laughs> this special gift. <laughs> I think it was my mother-in-law that got it for her, but it's uh, it's it's made with. She said it's made with almond milk. Oh, so wait like, a minute. There's 50 calories <laughs> in four ounces. <laughs> My normal serving is like at least sixteen ounces. So okay, well yeah. you know what? Maybe maybe all your sabbatical uh, You're not a fan, efforts huh? will uh, be gone if you want to chug in this before. Now, I don't know. I've tried it. It's just yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll maybe I'll give the almond milk one a try and we'll see what goes. And I'm yeah. gonna leave the holiday nog here for the rest of the uh, behind the pulpit. What this a morning. Scrooge! Eh. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, Merry Christmas. We're so glad you're joining us today. Um, Two things I want to let you know about that are coming up in uh, the next couple weeks here at NBC before we dive into some very special Christmas things. Number one, number one, uh, uh, if you are... uh, if you did come on Christmas Eve and you uh, missed this, or you missed this last night, we are, we do do a special Christmas Eve offering that goes towards our six local partner ministries. You can see who we're giving to there on the screen uh, in front of you. Um, so it's not too late to give. Uh, end of the year giving is is this week. It's coming up. So make sure that you um, yeah you give before mm-hmm. the end of the year and make sure your gift comes before December thirty first. December thirty first. That's what. That's right. That's the end of the year. So make sure and you. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Yeah, we very much appreciate that. And then, and then in January, we're gearing up here. We have a very special event called a Night of Revival coming up on uh, January the twelfth. Mark your calendars for that. Uh, you can kick off the new year right as we pray for revival for the Spirit of God to come and uh, just uh, just bring in twenty twenty four. I think twenty twenty four, Pastor Dave. We're gonna need some prayer and some revival because it's uh it's gonna be an interesting year. I feel like I can already sense it. It's coming out. Oh man! How totally are you, how agree. How are you feeling about twenty twenty four? Let's pray. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's ask the Lord to have His way with us. So. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right. So anyway, that's we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's next year. This year is not done yet. It's Christmas, man. It's Christmas. It is Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, you know, we thought today that um, we would uh, we would jump into our very famous in the news segment. And uh, do a little uh, top stories of 2023. What do you think about that? Awesome. Let's do it. In the news, man. First of all, the biggest news today is the news from the angels to the shepherds. Fear not. That's right. Behold, 
I bring you good tidings of great joy today in the city of mm. David. A Savior has been born to you, who is Christ the Lord. That is the biggest news of all time, biggest news of this year and every year. So that's the big news for it today. It will remain the biggest news every single year from here on out until the end of time, until Jesus comes back at the second advent, right? Yeah. That that's might right. be that might yeah, be the biggest might. news when that comes around. Yeah, that, that's true. That's yeah. true. All right. So uh, but other things have happened, We had too. some other things that happened this year, Pastor Small Dave. Small so news. Why don't we... Why don't we start listing off some big news from 2023, things things that we could remember and that I looked up a few here. Uh, you might remember these things from this year. So It's been a big uh, year. It's been a big year. So going back to the beginning of the year, um, uh, I forgot about this, but I looked it up. We had, a, we had a Chinese spy balloon that flew across the whole country and then got shot down like <laughs> after it was over <laughs> the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> It's like, yeah. all right, let's let it go across the whole country, and then let's shoot it down. We remember those days. <laughs> the good old days of the spy balloon watching. It's it's true. It's true. All right, what what about, you had a couple news stories that were big news for this year. Why don't you mention the, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sports stories. The sports in the sports world, we had a couple first evers. Uh, if you're an NBA fan, that you know that 2023 was the year of the Denver Nuggets. And so the Nugs. Uh, they've been creeping up. Uh, the last few years, but this was the year where they finally uh, made it to the top of the food chain, the top of the pyramid. And another first in sports in 2023, one that's near and dear to my heart, having gone to the old Texas uh, stadium many times when I was a kid, is the Texas Rangers for the first time ever won the World Series. And so there was great rejoicing down in the Lone Star State. So a couple first times ever. My goodness. And then if you're an NFL fan... Oh, by the way, we're going down for that conference in, in May. It's going to be right next to the Rangers Stadium, so mm-hmm. we'll have to go and like take a picture or something when we're down there. Yeah, that's great. And uh, then this is an NFL story that uh, kind of annoys me. Uh, <laughs> there's been a... Wait, Tim can a, find a picture of this one. An onslaught of new <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs fans that are learning the rules of football because of their affinity for his girlfriend. Somehow Taylor Swift always ends up on this podcast. Yeah. I love it. You know, was she was she back in Long Beach Island? Was she sighted back there? She was here in Jersey not, not that long ago. You weren't here over the so summer. The there news. was some Swifties. The news is there's camera angles on Taylor Swift on every Chiefs game, and we get to watch Taylor like 20 times every time the Chiefs come on TV. That's so my goodness. Hey, Does she even like football? Does she even like football? Shall we? Let's shake it off. So. Let's shake it off. So. All right. Other big news here this year. You may have heard about ChatGPT. AI uh, is is now fully in the news, so that's, that's a big thing. We're talking to robots. <laughs> robots are talking to us. We're having iterative conversations with... These chatbots and it's it's yes. been sweeping the world like storm. People yes. are people are now using this this tool for research. They're using this tool to write their school papers for them as a professor. They're, professors they're creating are church for, services uh, with AI. In Germany, there was in, that church right. service that was totally uh, not just there. There's others that have that have done it. Yeah. Okay, uh, and it's crazy. Uh, there's even that uh, app about chatting with AI Jesus. It, it's it's out of control. AI Jesus. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it, but you can wow. Like, you can sort of have a chat with AI Jesus. AI Jesus, okay. I, I don't know that I would recommend that. It's, but AI is taking yeah. the world by storm this year. Lots of lots of uh, activity there. We had an underground sessions about that. We did, just recently. You can go back and watch it on the YouTube channel. Uh, Noah did a great uh, thumbnail for, the, for that event. You can listen um, to a sermon from me that I never preached. In my breaking voice. news, <laughs> <laughs> breaking news sermon that Pastor Dave never yeah. never preached. All right, All right, time to drink some drink some eggnog here. Picture that. Here you go. What's in yeah. this? I don't. Why don't you? <laughs> why don't you check? check what are you trying to do? Loosen me up here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. On, on the sad front, we had uh, the Ukraine war still is dragging on, but then we also had the the terrible stuff that happened in Israel back uh, a couple months ago. In October, so the Israel Hamas war is going on because of of that. Um, October seventh, that October was a big 7th, story. There's still big story, still hostages that we're praying for their release, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, we're praying for an end to this conflict and for peace to occur. Yes, yes. And then uh, this summer we had some some the return of some blockbusters. Uh, uh, Barbie made a big splash along with Oppenheimer back in July at the box office. Those were some of the big. Uh, uh, the big uh, grossing films of the year. I'm sad to say, or maybe proud to say, I haven't seen either one of those yeah. movies. Well, Barbie is now streaming, so if you want to get your Barbie on, um, you Thank can watch you it at home. Thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I was looking this morning about movies that we could see Christmas night, because sometimes we kind of like to Aquaman. get out of the house. Aquaman was on the list. I don't think any of my daughters would agree to go see that tomorrow. So okay. we were looking at Migration or Wonka. So one of those, maybe. Okay. But we'll see. All right. Um, well, I'm looking for a report 
uh, next week. Which well, one? Maybe, Behind the pole, well, whichever one you see. Yeah, Let me, I, we'll do. We should start doing a movie review segment on the on the on the pulpit. I agree. We should also do book reviews. I we forgot should. about that. Book but, re- that's um, that's. We're gonna add that in for next year. Twenty twenty four will be the year of book reviews and movie reviews. Right here on Behind the Pulpit recommendations. Yeah, Bob reads a book like every five minutes, so, so um, he's got a lot. We, to recommend. We'll have to work up like a Cisco and Eber thing where we do thumbs up, thumbs down. We'll have to come up with a rating system. I like it. Like a one. Uh, I don't know. One one sword, two swords. You know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what what is your reading time, man? Like, are you like a speed reader? Because Bob will go upstairs to his office and come back downstairs to my office like an hour later. Be like, I just read this book. You should read this book, man. <laughs> Bro, have a heart. <laughs> it's not right. It's not I, right. I do well. You, I, you pile them on. I, I mix it up. So sometimes I'll read it. Sometimes I do the audio book. Sometimes I combine them together. It just it depends on the type of book that that we're reading. You know. Yeah. I'll just walk over to the office. And be like, anybody seen Bob? He's probably reading somewhere. <laughs> go s- snap. Just smack that book out of his hand. Hey, Just by the way, I was I was watching a little little uh, uh, trivia stuff about Abraham Lincoln, and it turns out he like Abraham Lincoln actually got books from his neighbors and like read all the books within fifty miles of his house. Apparently, that was a a thing that Abraham Lincoln did. He also like challenged people to wrestling. Apparently, <laughs> he's no match for you, my friend. <laughs> I think Honest you could, Abe. number one, Honest out-read Abe. him, and number two, out-wrestle him. So I don't uh, know about that. He was tallest president ever, man. He's tall, taller know, than you. If you want to know if books are recommended, ask Pastor Bob. He's probably read there it. There you go. He's New segment coming up. Look on that. All right. So that's uh, that's the top stories. Did I miss any top stories for 2023? I, that's a lot. That's yeah, good. We got them. Yeah. Oh, other, wait. Other, some, some, some well-known brothers in Christ and uh, pastors yes. have... Uh, passed yes. on to glory and been welcomed into heaven with open arms this year. I'm pretty sad about it. I'm still kind of getting over the fact that Tim Keller passed away this Tim year. Tim Keller passed away that was back tough. in May. That was earlier in the year. That was what, May? May, end yeah. of May. Yeah, mm-hmm. very difficult. Uh, Charles Stanley, the great In Touch Ministries, uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. had his home going to glory. And then um, you're probably not as familiar with Jack Hayford, but he had a pretty significant ministry. Yeah, uh, he passed away, and Pat Robertson also passed away this year. So a lot we of lost big some names, giants, man. And uh, those uh, those pastors have some big shoes to fill. So uh, it's been a sad year, but yeah. uh, not sad for them. So we thank the yeah. Lord for that hope of glory that rejoicing we rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. That's right. So it's been a big year. All right. Okay. So I think we have another segment that's coming up here. Uh, that oh, yeah. We don't know about. This is going to be a bit of a surprise we're adding in here for you. So um, it is our Christmas we episode. We love surprises here. I'm behind the pulpit. So no, Do we? Do we I had surprises? an idea. Noah <laughs> and I know? had some ideas to make this more Christmassy. Um, so we have two new segments. I got a holiday nog right here that says it's Christmas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Califia. Yeah. We have two new segments for you guys. Um, two new segments. The first All right. is I took a poll um, from the two of you to find out your favorite traditional Christmas carols slash hymns. I know. Your favorite overall Christmas songs and then your favorite Christmas movies. So okay. I have them up on the screen here and we'll go from each wow, one. Wow, I was guys, delinquent in getting these into you. That's pretty impressive. You, you guys so can quickly. go and um, debate them. So here first are your traditional Christmas carols. Here are the lists. Compare, contrast, discuss. Here's well, what we got here. Well, hold on, some okay, overlap. Well, hold on. There's, There's some overlap some serious here. Serious overlap. Wow. Okay, well, let's see what we got. Hark the Herald Angels Sing, both. Okay. Joy to the we World. We sang that today, which was glorious. Oh, Holy Night, both. Uh-huh. Uh, o Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So, what we're debating here is Joy to the World and It Came Upon a Midnight Clear versus Silent Night and uh, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Mm. All right. Tell, tell me why I'm wrong, Pastor Dave. Well, I don't think you're wrong, so to speak. <laughs> I think that those are great options. Um, I'm not as familiar with It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Yeah, you know what? I chose it specifically because it's less well-known. Right. But I like the, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. <laughs> anyway. That's good. Yeah. Well, we do this Come Thou Long Expected version at NBC that, like, as Tim says, takes us up into the rafters. It's just an amazing uh, song, so I love that. Um, Tim you know, likes to be in the rafters. One of these days, I'm going to find Tim up in the rafters, yeah. literally. 
It's like, where's Tim? There he is, up in the rafters. Up in the rafters. <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight you He's going to be drinking nail. the holiday nog up in the, <laughs> up in the rafters. <laughs> he is. So I am going to strongly oppose your, your, your leaving out of Silent Night onto the top five list. Man. I thought so you would. First I, thought, you know, Silent I, I Night specifically didn't put it in there because I thought it would rile you up. Oh, this is not the only thing that's going to rile up Pastor So David what happens is uh, there's a great story about the organ not working properly for this church in Germany. And this guitarist like steps in and writes probably the, the most famous Christmas carol of all time, Silent Night. And they play it not on an well, organ, of, but on a guitar. all time. Well. That's like I was saying, I chocolate chip cookies you. are the only cookies. I challenge you. <laughs> uh, Some cookies around. are created equal. That's <laughs> <laughs> there is a reason why almost every church closes their Christmas candlelight service with Silent Night. It is a classic, and it it deserves no. to be in the top five. Bob, well, so. some people follow the crowd. Some people go go their own way. You know, that's just like, <laughs> you can go your own way. What if we What if we lit the candles to O Holy Night? That's not right. <laughs> Right. Okay. As you can see, one of us likes to do things in a traditional way. Yes. The other one yes. likes to like color outside the lines. That's, a that's, that's, that's there you about go. to be made abundantly clear as there we move go. into our Christmas songs. Christmas songs. Let's see here. So we wait, go. how do we discern what's a song versus what's a hymn? What's the criteria? Because I was I, like one of my songs was one of your hymns. So I don't know if I'm confused <laughs> or. What's the difference? I, I don't know. I think that's on is me it for rhythm? not being is more it specific. Meter? I was asking Tim. He said you, you could include some of those songs over over. Yeah, here. my my thing was. Why um, do I only have four? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> can I not count? No. Well, I, you can you, it just add in one later. All right. I'll throw in another one. <laughs> here we go. Look at this. Look at what. Just Dave, look at that and let me know what you think about that, bro. I got a serious <laughs> problem with a couple of these songs on your list, man. Like we cannot be friends anymore. Hee haw, hee haw, so hee haw. How, hee-haw. how did you come Dominic up with number three? The donkey. I just I, I every year I heard it growing up. Chickadee ching. Can, <laughs> just get not not sing it when it comes on, dude. I'm gonna need some eggnog, not man. Fi- this is not, not right. This is not Feliz good. Feliz Navidad. I need, I need a swig. Z. This guy oh, likes to do it. Navidad. Dun, 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 dun. Is that on your list too? Yeah, Feliz Navidad. No, it isn't. Yes, Put that list is. back up there. Well, oh my god. Felix Navidad. My daughters will tell <laughs> you. For the typo. One of my daughter's favorite pastimes is to annoy me this month by putting on Feliz Navidad because I hate it so much. I didn't know this was going to be so. Uh, I don't so know who Felix here. Navidad is, but Feliz know. Navidad is just so it just reminds me of the southern hemisphere and the warm temperatures during december mm, like no 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 I it see. should be it should be cold bob i'll have to tell you have dreaming to you of know, a white christmas when when dave responded to my email about this he under his christmas songs he had a disclaimer for worst christmas songs ever and dominic the donkey was <laughs> referred to as an earworm <laughs> it gets in my he head called it an earworm <laughs> it gets in your head and won't get out Hee-haw, hee-haw, oh hee-haw, hee-haw. It's Dominic the donkey. You All know right. what's interesting? That, Itali- that movie, Dude, it's a wonderful- You're from an Italian family. It's the I Italian know. Christmas donkey. I know. I was married in, okay? <laughs> this was the tradition I choose not to adopt. I'm, <laughs> I'm sticking with the Germans in Silent Night on this one, man. I don't know what the Italians were it's thinking. Like, there was an organ. There was a war, and yeah. they sang. <laughs> and then over here, the Italians are going, hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. Speaking of hee haw, there's that guy in It's a Wonderful Life that like always says hee haw when he's like saying no. hello to people. What is that about? I don't know. That made no. That was the I worst part of that movie. What? I don't know. I didn't ever. <laughs> Can you imagine that being your like trademark greeting? Greeting like, hey, Pastor Bob, hee haw. And hee-haw. these guys, these guys are like what, like thirty five, forty years hee-haw, old. Hee-haw, hee-haw. And they're you can just turn like everybody that. at your Christmas dinner tonight and just go hee haw, hee haw, hee haw. <laughs> <laughs> and then start singing Dominic the Donkey because it fits right in. All right. So. Goodness. Goodness gracious. Right. Well, right. the, the rest of your songs are good. Okay. I, so I can put that back up. So I, I like I like your choices here. You, you I, I can understand a little more conservative. I do like the Come Behold the Wondrous mm-hmm. Mystery. What is the You Are the Light? I'm not familiar with that one. That's an obscure modern uh, day clearly. Christmas Does song. Does anybody, anybody watching today know <laughs> what song that song is? Clearly. <laughs> what is this about? Google it, go to YouTube, type in You Are the Light by David Hodges. You will enjoy that and be blessed by the Christmas wonder. I think my fifth song was Sing Sing by Josh Josh Wilson, Wilson. which is another great That was your number four. So don't know. So You Are the Light would be number five. Yeah. My apologies. Also a good one. So Google it. Those are two good songs. Put them on your Spotify playlist. All right. 
th- there was something about, I remember something in movies too. I want to hear the movies. movies. Now this is this is this is interesting too because once again, like the songs, we have two sort of polar opposite almost. Oh my okay, not not see. completely. Let me see. Let what me have see. you Let done? What have you done? Not completely, but it's a little different. Okay, we got some overlap here. A little overlap. I, I just like how Pastor Dave has I, the 1951 I did, okay, I, Christmas Carol, and Pastor true. Bob has the Scrooge McDuck <laughs> version. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes. <laughs> Duck tails. <laughs> <woo-hoo>. <laughs> what in the world? We did. Okay, I've so never again, seen the Scrooge Rudolph McDuck the Red Nosed Reindeer. All right, we had. Um, Are we both talking about the one from the 60s with like the clay, yes, clay, clay animation? Clay, one? T- I put in there claymation. That that's the only one there is. That can't be replaced. That's the only one. <laughs> Okay. The Grinch. I, How you know, about so, the Abominable Snowman in, oh in my, Rudolph? Man? <laughs> what is that guy? I had nightmare. I'm going to give my kids nightmares. Bumbles when I bounce. It. That's true. So, um, okay. So differences on the Christmas Carol. You you wanted to go with the the original there. Uh, I did. Tim didn't put in my honorary mentions. I did give an honorary mention to the Grinch. Okay. Uh, the 1966 one or the, the old, more the modern old, one? No, the old, Jim Carrey. No, uh, the, the, the one, one. you're. Yeah, the one you're referring Pastor to. Pastor Dave had an honorable mention as well. His is Bad Santa. <laughs> <laughs> that has so many layers of meaning right there. How can Home Alone and Elf I uh, are modern classics and a Christmas story? You'll shoot your eye out. Yeah, I, I somebody's think... somebody's gonna Charlie get... Brown. Okay, all right, it's a wonderful life. Again, I was trying to think a little bit off the beaten path. Oh, they're all those are all good good movies there. I think Elf is the modern day Christmas version of Don't Stop Believing, Christmas, which is oh, it's a it's a great movie believing. that is just played over and over and over and over again, mm. and it's just become tiresome after a while. That's maybe just my opinion. All right, but all right. don't enough. stop. I, haven't, I actually haven't seen it in a couple of years. So maybe I'll have to believe watch it this year. So now we have come. Wait, so can th- we just talk about Charlie Brown? So there was this like line in there where Linus is telling the real Christmas story, and he goes, "Fear not," and he drops his blanket. Uh, symbolizing and you know making significant the fact that when we when we understand the Christmas story we can we can let go of our fears. That's a wonderful little scene. He wouldn't be Fear not anymore. Drop there the you blanket. Go. You should have you should have played it during your. Uh, I never knew that. Yeah. yeah, it's a very intentional yeah. scene. He drops his security blanket. And says, I want you to Fear notice not. Tim. I, I moved the Boom. holiday nog forward, and now it's focusing on that. Yeah, you're messing focus. up our focus yeah, here, that's Bob. Good. That's right. <laughs> Um, all yeah. right, so now it's time for the uh, our. Could you move the uh, the holiday nog a little farther back? No, backwards, backwards. I'd like. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Right. Perfect. Right. Um, so feel free, Dave. Feel free. Okay. So I had this idea. I Only four say, ounces, though. Only four. Like in the Dairy summertime, free. where we would go through and we would get the top ten sermon props of the year and we would rank them live on behind oh, the pulpit my goodness so without further we should have done these things first this is what the, the things people wanted to know hear from us today noah and i gathered as many as we could find and we ranked them there was more than 10 but we ranked 10 through one um, i feel like i had a light prop year this year i'm interested to see what you guys think the I number which one number 10 think. the sword of the spirit Wow. Oh, you know what? Mark Melillo told me after the fact he had swords I should have asked for. And that's so why it was that. ranked lower. That's right. Um, you know what? Is that thing going to like extend more? <laughs> or is that as big no, as it that's, gets? That's No, because the point was it's not a long sword. That's why I picked it. That was that's actually from my Vitamix. It's the st- <laughs> the mixer on my Vitamix. Oh, I was my just gosh. trying to I can see why that's number 10. <laughs> I was just trying to show the size of the this sword. This is what happens when I go on sabbatical. That kind of <laughs> hey, stuff makes I, I it onto the stage. I had some other ones that made up for it, okay? Man, that was we'll a really get sad looking sword. Not everybody can have the sword that you had today, you know? That was a heck of a sword today. Okay. I think but That's you. not thank a short sword, to, not the sword from Ephesians 6. Thank you to Rachel and Lenore for that. Yeah. So it's more like a dagger? It was a dagger. Number yeah. nine is the paper chain that Pastor Bob used. All right, all right. That was that ago. was from Rachel. So Ron already mentioned for Rachel. She did the... Uh, what are we symbolizing here? This was the... Uh, I was doing the Psalm 90, um, oh. Psalm 90 and the, the, the time. You know, you're losing your time. Oh. Your, your breath, you know. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. It's not like yeah. Pastor, Again, you, you Pastor were also, Dave's the weakest link illustration while I'm yeah. gone or something. Well, you like were that. gone. You, you missed that. You missed the sword. You missed most of my props. I used a lot of props during the... Uh, most of these are actually from the Spiritual Warfare series, the Summer Series. I'll give you props. There you go. All right. Number eight was the wall as it was used in our uh, end of year 
Um, okay. Vision Sunday. Can that. we talk about how awesome that wall was? Tim, it was a Tim great worked wall. really hard on that. That was really good. And then you were making fun of me because I didn't have enough hammering. You were, you were noise. hammering in the, the that's the hammering the is what but brought then, it then that, so high on the list. Darren got upset at me later because we didn't do it and I didn't put it in the right order or something. Yeah, I, I built the wall incorrectly. When no one that I was were, really messing him up. <laughs> when no one, you know, I was it's interesting. The you wall. use a prop and people really begin to focus. That's their right. See, I, I didn't, I didn't build them on top of each other. I didn't think about that. So when, it was when Noah and I were discussing the wall, the the hammering in of the bricks uh, con, con, uh, contributed to its higher ranking. Than some of the other ones. Oh, I see. So the so sound effects were auditory good there, okay. stimuli. It's not just the prop; it's up. use of prop, um, visual and audio combined. Okay. Yeah, so I, I had I one. That. I had one I amazing that. prop this year that I'm going to be disappointed if it's not number one. We'll oh, see. Boy. We'll see what goes. Okay, so I guess we'll see find out. Okay. Uh, the next prop, which I believe is is at number seven, is the bubbles that were used on oh, Easter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were. We were. We were trying to symbolize the word hevel from ecclesiastes mm. as that which is fleeting this that which is, is true. meaningless this that is which true. comes and goes that which we can't grasp that which is uh symbolic of life itself that is short and transitory like a bubble excellent number six is the pickleball that you guys <laughs> played in the same sermon that you guys remember hammered. i tried to take out your feet on that one pastor dave as you can uh, see you, you also took out the lights you can see one of them is <laughs> knocked down the, light, knocked the lights already those are kind of a prop <laughs> those lights those were like soccer balls all all summer how clumsy are we that we kept kicking those over like every week sorry about that tim no it's okay sorry walter sorry walter yeah it's now walter watches behind the pulpit every week <laughs> So our 2024 one, resolution, get some more pickleball in my life. That's right. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Our next one is a uh, is a recent addition. Did you say Reese's? No. <laughs> Reese. That, the Reese's this was act, not the year Reese's of the Reese's actually, this year, though. The Reese's were an honorable mention. Yes, they were. Um, we are. All right. So this one was pretty recent, and it's very simple. But the Oh, use that's of right. It, they were the Ecclesiastes. I forgot. The use of it is what made us love it so much. It is the John paper. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! We, what, what number was that one? Uh, the John paper is number five. <laughs> really? That's number five. Oh my god! Look, just, that, look how serious I am about that prop. John, John is in that trouble. That was my right impressionation there. of Zechariah. Particularly John is in, in the first trouble. sermon when Pastor Dave is explaining the situation, he slowly brings the paper up on his head and turns it around. <laughs> it says John. I thought we we really got a kick out of that. Well. <laughs> You know, I didn't write it down in Greek or right. Hebrew, but English English had to do. And I just uh, imagine if Zechariah was trying to get John in trouble and he couldn't talk, you know how you say your kid's first name real sternly yes. and real loud, like, you know, yes. like, Michaela Faith. Zechariah couldn't do that. So you, you just have to look mad and just hold, goes, hold up the John. John. Well, he <clears> would have chiseled it like on, on uh, the papyrus or something. Well, I think they had, it was a little more, more advanced than stone yeah. tablets. Okay. But yeah. There we go. Number four. We're getting into the classics here. The Prepared Penguin. The Prepared Penguin was pretty good. Number four. Again, Pastor Dave, you missed this one. This was the outdoor service right there. Utterly iconic. I'm not here. You guys are just moving church outside. It's I craziness do. this summer. I do. You guys are like out I'm going to have to think about some good... It, uh, this is going to be a yearly segment. I'm going to have to think of some good ones to begin the new year now. All right. Well, we didn't know we were going to give a report card here. That's Well, now you know. Now you know for next year. Prepared, be, what was the prepared. prepared Penguin supposed to be? It was the beginning of the spiritual warfare Look series. It was a kid. <laughs> it, Can't okay, I have to let me give it. you let me give a quick story about this. So, it was um, um, uh, we, we were doing a family service outdoors, and I, I was trying to find something for the kids, and I, I came across an illustration about this penguin and how they avoid killer whales, and I was trying to. I had this idea of finding a stuffed penguin. We didn't have any. And my wife goes on Amazon Marketplace or whatever and says, does anybody have a penguin? And there was this lady who had a stuffed penguin over here in Spring Ridge. We, we went over and she, she just gave it to us. And then, my, and then Jenna loved it so much she had to kept – Jenna still has it in her bed. Now she sleeps with the penguin. Special thank so, you to the lady who answered the, the lady call. Over, actually lived like right next to – I used to live like right next to her back in the – when I first moved here back in the day in Spring Ridge. Back in the Bob Spring Ridge yeah. days. What, what a clutch friend. It was. She was. Yeah, she was clutch. I mean, like... Pre she was a prepared penguin, literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> number three is the Shield of Faith. Boo! Should have been number one. 
Look at your face. I want to see. I want to see what's uh, what, what, what's up what are here. You saying later, there, man. What, what's going on there? I said, get behind the shield, the man. The top three was very difficult to discern. All right. I want to see is what that, else they came up with here. Is that a table? Number two what is, is that? No, go. Pastor Dave's umbrella. There is no way the umbrella beat the shield of faith. Come on. <laughs> I call foul on these judges. It was tough between that Look and the Look at the shadowing. That, that, that is such a good he was, use of the was prop. He, we, was he clicking his heels and singing in the rain? Here's what came into that. The fact that Pastor, I believe Pastor Dave had like five or six points in his sermon that Sunday. And every every time... He brought it up, and I oh, think yeah. by the end he got so sick and tired of holding it up every time that he just began to just drop it on the ground <laughs> and make a really loud noise. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done with this umbrella. I get more and more tired as the sermon progresses. <laughs> and How many times did you lift the sword up today? It was heavy sword, sword. man. Sword. I was like Thor with the hammer. I could barely pick it up at the end of the the message. Well, here you go. Here's some here's some holiday nog for you. Right there. <laughs> and number one, one that may not be seen coming. Bit of a wild card and a dark horse, but it made it to number one. Johnny Graves and his guitar uh, for his sermon that he incorporated music into. We uh, no one could that be considered that. a prop. So that was the great that was the great know. debate. Could that be considered a prop? We figured it was, and we gave it the number one spot. All right, we're gonna we're gonna appeal this to the Supreme Court and see uh, and see so, what they think about this. Congratulations, Johnny! You uh you are <laughs> as of now before the appeal. <laughs> this year's number Assuming one. Assuming Johnny's prop. gonna watch this tomorrow for Christmas. There you go. <laughs> well, that's something you and I have not tried a sermon that sings with that quite that much. Well, so well, it's true, but that's because maybe Johnny we Johnny, put Johnny it on can our sing. List. You know. Yeah, that does help. I'm doing a little musical number tonight, but I, I had to call John. I had to phone a friend for John to help me out. Wow! So all right, stay tuned. Are you yeah, hopefully going to be came last singing night, with John sing. or just you? Uh, no, he's gonna be he's gonna be singing for me. Um, uh, so just stay tuned. Stay tuned. Whoa! I sw- I switched it up a little bit from well, the other day. Those of who are, who are already watching this, you already know what happened. You so do. We, we hope it went alert, well. You know, you know what happened last night. So uh, you can you can debrief and let me know if you thought I should have sang or if it was okay that John. John did it. So that was our top 10 sermon props of the year. Up All for, right. Uh, uh, review, apparently. Props for the props. <laughs> props. All right. Well, that, you know, that's, you that was a lot that. of pictures and a lot of work. Uh, thank you so much for, for ranking uh, them incorrectly. But, it was uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Any, any other segments? the Bible that... uses props a lot. You know, true. How, how often did Jesus use an illustration or point to something or use something from nature? Or to... look, look at the uh, the flowers of the field, right? Yeah. Like, they don't worry. Don't worry. So we're just trying to be, like, biblical. That's true. That's true. That is the end of our extra segments. All right. Good. So uh, before we uh, uh, end, your, you can move on and you can start drinking your drinking your eggnog today for, uh, for Christmas. Um. I always get this wrong. There we go. Uh, we, we figured we, we, we couldn't miss out on the normal stuff we do on Behind the Pulpit, so we're going to do a quick sermon review, and then Tim said he has a, a an epic end of 2023 theology mm. sprint for us uh, today. So, uh, so Pastor Dave, you were preaching today. Uh, Luke 2, all of Luke 2. Uh, although we didn't, we didn't get the Jesus in the temple. Uh, he didn't become twelve. That's the end That's of right. Luke two. So we, I just, I was, you know, it's, we we all like to forget our middle school years. So like <laughs> it's just not <laughs> Jesus in the temple. Well, it is a great story, but it just didn't quite fit with the Christmas theme of everything else. So yeah. um, we are beginning read it to on do... your own. I didn't finish Luke chapter two. It does go all the way up to verse fifty two. It's true. So keep reading and uh, keep being blessed by the Gospel of Luke. We did uh, finish Act 1 of our series on Luke, which was Luke 1 and 2. Um, next week, we're starting Act 2, which we're calling Meeting Our Savior. So uh, Ken Huber is going to be preaching next week. Awesome. Ken, back by popular demand. He uh, jumped into Philippians. Now he's coming into, into Luke uh, this, uh, this, uh, this coming week. So we hope to see you for uh, New Year's Eve. But uh, Pastor Dave, um, you preached today. Um, you had some uh, some bifurcation points uh, in your sermon. Could you give us a quick like thirty second overview of what you covered for those that did not come to the morning service today, even though we had a packed service? Yeah, Luke chapter two is a familiar text, and Luke likes to introduce us with uh, characters in pairs. You know, we've seen Elizabeth and Mary. Uh, we've seen these these uses of two. So we had three parts to the message today, all in 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 pairs. So. Uh, the first section was a pair of contrasting kings. Mm-hmm. The second section mm-hmm. was a pair of unusual I you, groups. You, you worked the chart in there. I recommended you that chart. That. I, saw, I yeah. saw it. I was waiting for you to flip the triangle on its head. Ah. It was going to like... Whoosh. 
next year. Two unusual groups. Of course, we're talking about the angels and the shepherds. And then two extra- ordinary yet extraordinary saints. Mm. So uh, the title of the message was Prepare Him Room, because this is, of course, the famous story where there's no room for Jesus At in the, the inn. There's no room. And the question is, you know, have we made room in our lives for Christ? And so that was kind of the theme of today's message. Well, I'll tell you what, the image that I cannot get out of my mind was this, some scholars think that the uh, the stable was the bottom floor, and then they lived above the stable. And uh, I'm just trying to think, what would it be like to have some sheep and goats and whatnot, like, in my basement as I'm trying to sleep? Yeah. That's a popular view. Um, it mm. could be that. They've found some ancient uh, architectural type of um, homes that that fit that scenario, mm. but All other right. people say there's some evidence for a cave. In fact, if you go to so Israel... So tell, tell me about the cave thing here. Okay. That was like so, literally a cave? Like, like literally there's a trolls cave. and dragons in the cave or, or what? No trolls, no dragons, although there was a symbolic dragon that was waiting to devour right. the child right. in the cave. Which, the uh, those of you that came last night, you heard you heard about the, the great red dragon right here. I have to keep my the shirt on for tonight. Yeah, so... There is a famous church in Bethlehem that's called the Church of the Nativity, okay. where you can go visit that. And that church was built on top of a cave inside of that church. And supposedly that is the cave that was the birthplace of the Lord Jesus. I don't know that that's been proven, uh, but there is some history and some belief that it was more like a cave. So was it a a house with two floors? Was it a cave? Was it a stable? We really are not told. But we can, we can know for sure that this was not exactly a sterile hospital okay. room at Morristown <laughs> Memorial. This was a filthy place. This was a place that's not sanitary. There's lot, lots of bacteria floating around in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the cave yeah. as Jesus came in the world. So that speaks to his uh, no hepatitis commonness. B shots when he's coming no. out. No, that speak to his, speaks to his humility. It speaks to his commonness. It speaks to uh, really the the characteristic that will will. Uh, pretty much summarize his whole life, that he was a humble king. So he came humble. Yeah. Well, well, very cool. Well, you, I thought you did a great job un- unpacking all of that and the shepherds and and everything. And I think you were you were asking us some some good questions, like this, this whole, the very famous section of Luke 2, where the angels come and speak and they say, fear not, behold. Um, you really, you really kind of got at us by asking us, you know, what are the things that we fear and what are things that we're we're beholding to. Um, mm-hmm. What What do you think? Uh, what do you think people are beholden to that we should be aware of this Christmas? You know, I think a lot of us focus our attention on the wrong things. A lot of us focus on what we love. We focus on what we think will give us satisfaction. We focus our eyes. We focus our gaze on that which we think will save us. And because we're so focused on that, we we live with a sense of uh, anxiety about it. Mm. We live with a sense of fear about it. And so the angels come with a very counter uh, intuitive message of fear not, behold, and they want, they want the shepherds to behold this Christ child who's the Savior, Christ the Lord, born in Bethlehem that day. When we focus on him, fix our eyes on him, uh, our fears are undermined by the fact that we're beholden to Christ. Mm, that's good. And then, um, you know, the, the other thing I, I thought uh, that was that was pretty powerful was... Um, uh, at the end, you're talking a little bit about this uh, uh, this whole idea about the sword, which, you know, you had the sword going throughout. The sword piercing our soul. Um, that's kind of graphic, right? Mm. But uh, maybe maybe as a, an encouragement for folks this Christmas, before we're kind of finishing up today, what, what, what are some areas that you would encourage people to allow the sword of the Spirit to, to pierce and to cut back? Um, you know, what, 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 are, what are things that we're holding on to that maybe Jesus wants to come and, and cut away? Yeah, this was a revelation to Mary given by Simeon. He has this great blessing and prophecy upon the Christ child, but then he turns to Mary, looks at her, and says, and a sword will pierce your soul also. And I think for the first time ever, you begin to see mm-hmm. that this redemption, this salvation that this Christ child will bring will have also uh, a great amount of suffering, a great amount of pain involved, not just for the Messiah, who will die for our sins, and for the sins of the world, but for Mary herself, who will have to watch her son endure such great pain and suffering. And part of Mm -hmm. Mary's journey is embracing that sword in her own soul and embracing the path that God has put her on. And in a parallel fashion, I think if we want to follow Christ, if we want to make room for Christ in our lives, then we've got to allow that sword to pierce our soul as well. 
We've got to allow God by the sword of the Spirit, uh, by his Holy Spirit, to, to cut away those parts of our hearts that are beholden to other things, those parts of our hearts that are sinful, those parts of our hearts that are not pleasing to him. And we've got to allow him to put that sword in our soul so that he can heal us with the antiseptic of the gospel. Mm. But the good news is that the Lord Jesus led the way here. So first, he's the one who suffered for our sake, for our sins, mm. and took the sword in his soul so that we would never have to face the sword of God's wrath. You know, I'm reminded that there was this sword outside of the Garden of Eden that was mm-hmm. kind of blocking Flaming the way. Sword. And that sword, of course, uh, came down on Christ, uh, who took the judgment, took the wrath of the Father upon himself. And so first he took the sword in his soul, and then he invites us to take the sword in our soul so that we might follow him and be healed. And so, uh, you know, the theme of the sermon was like, you know, make room for Jesus. But I think it's important for us to be gospel-centered and recognize that actually the Christmas story is that first he was making room for us. Mm -hmm. And because we know and believe that he made room for us, we then can make room for him. And so that's the good news. You had a bit of a counterintuitive statement that you made. You know, you said you saw the signs that say Jesus is the reason for the season, mm. and and they annoy you a because little bit. really, uh, we're said, the reason. I for said the Jesus season. was doing fine up in heaven. <laughs> like he didn't really have to come. Yes, yes, he was the divine Son of God. He was worshipped by angels. There's really no reason why he needed to come down to earth, become incarnate, and die for the sins of the world. And so I understand what people are saying. They're saying, you know. Try not to focus on the secular elements of Christmas, Santa, Frosty, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm, Rudolph, mm-hmm. purple dragons, uh, right. pur- weird pur- light shows. Dragon, you know, Jesus is the reason for the season. <laughs> and there's some truth to that. But what I was just saying is that actually you're the reason for the season. You're the reason why yeah. he came, took on flesh, lived a perfect life, died for our sins, and of course was raised to life again, seated at the Father's right hand to rule and to reign. And this is why he came. Uh, to redeem us. Yeah. So we're the reason for the season. Yeah. Well, that is... Not that, that is, we deserved it. I don't mean to Well, that's like, something for you to, I don't reflect, want to, to reflect on today as you're love. opening up presents and you're, you're doing whatever you're doing for Christmas. You are the reason, uh, which is comforting because Christ came to die for you. By the way, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of our talk. Uh, Noah did a great job of summarizing the first act of the sermon series. So I was going to invite Tim to insert that video right here. Um, and let you watch that before we come back and do the theology sprint and finish off. Do you know you're lost? Do you believe that you need saving? We miss our lostness because we run to other saviors. They mask our lostness. We are in a world lost in utter darkness with enemies all around. We are all in desperation saying, God, show me the way. Show me the way. After Nehemiah ends, there is 400 years of silence. No scriptures written, no prophets speak, there's just silence, and it seems like the joy has left Jerusalem. Imagine 400 years where there's no prophet, 400 years where God's voice was never heard. Generations had lived and died never hearing from God in their lifetime. And it's during this period of silence that the people are waiting, they're longing for Messiah to come and end their suffering. And they waited, and they waited. For centuries, they waited. But the promised king did not return. This is the moment right here in Luke chapter one where the God of the universe is about to resume speaking. And he chooses to speak to this relatively unknown man named Zechariah, whose name means Yahweh has remembered. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. Luke is communicating to us that this gospel story is the story about how God remembers his promises and how God is faithful to keep his promises for his people. In fact, Luke's first two chapters, so well known at Christmas, explode with the truth that someone better is here. The real savior has come with his kingdom. Why? To seek and to save the lost. He came to save 
the world. This is the nexus. This is the center. This is the climax. This is the pinnacle of God's promises and their fulfillment. This is the Son of Man prophesied in Daniel chapter 7. Did God not promise in Isaiah 7 that a virgin would be with child and give birth to a son? Is he not fulfilling his word right here? Did God not promise to save his people and to rescue his people from our enemies of sin and death and the devil? Is God not doing that right here? The answer is yes. And all of the promises of God in Christ are yes and amen. Jesus came to fulfill God's promise of Messiah who would save the world. And this is why Luke writes his gospel account. Because after all the waiting, after all the pain, after all the doubts, after all the uncertainty, the king is here. Jesus is here, and he came to seek and to save the lost. All right, Tim, let's bring it home. Let's do a little theology sprint here as we finish up. All right, let's sprint right into it, guys. Here we go. Christmas edition While theology here, sprint. Might as well. If Jesus was born to redeem humanity from sin, why was sin still present in the world after his death and resurrection? That's an interesting question. Thank you for asking it. You're welcome. Why Why was sin still present even after Jesus' death and resurrection? Right, since he was um, born to redeem humanity from sin. Yeah, well, uh, we, we typically talk about these, these two advents of Jesus coming. So Jesus came first. I like where you're going with this. The first advent, Jesus comes and ushers in the kingdom. So the kingdom, what theologians call is the kingdom is... Um, is here, but it's not yet fully here. It's the already, but not yet. And so sin and all that will not be fully eradicated until Jesus comes back at the second advent to come and to make an end to Satan and his schemes and throw him in the lake of fire and then ultimately usher in the new heavens and the new earth um, after the millennial kingdom, depending on what you think about that. Um, so what would you, what would you add to I that? I think that was a today? perfect answer. I should have worn my shirt with the <laughs> chart me. of the already but not yet right. stuff on it. I think that's Your true. Little, uh, Pauline eschatology I will there. say in the Old Testament, that was not as clearly delineated. They thought that the Messiah was going to come and then mm-hmm. vanquish sin and one big coming. And I don't think they qu- clearly understood that there was two coming separated mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. at least a couple thousand years so far. Yeah, so far. I've heard regarding sin, there's kind of three phases. So the first coming is Christ uh, took away the penalty for sin. Mm-hmm. In, 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 this, in this age, in the church age, the Holy Spirit has taken away the power of sin. And then one day uh, in the yep. consummation of the kingdom, go. God will take away the presence of sin. And so we long for that day. We look forward to that day. It's I like coming. It. I like that three points right there. Boom. So we, that is our great Christian hope that one day... Uh, sin will be no more. There will be no How's more that? crying or pain or tears. The old order is going to pass away. John tells us in yeah. Revelation. So, yeah, and that's some good hope for Christmas. Amen. Very good. All right. Well, great to be with you on this Christmas uh, podcast. That's right. I hope we have a very merry Christmas, and uh, we will see you in uh, 2024 on behind the pulpit, and maybe we'll see you for the last day of the year next Sunday. Let me encourage you to share the Christmas greeting today. So the Christmas greeting is this. You say Christ is in our midst and the answer is he was, he is, and forever will be. God bless you guys.